Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back in to some more bite-sized business advice. And today's episode, we have something I'm very familiar with. The topic is why noisy wins the day. And I have three little kids and they always win. They're very noisy. So I think that might be what we're talking about. It might not be. We're going to find out. I have a very special guest, Fitz Kohler. Welcome to the show and thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks, Brandon. And hello to all of Brandon's listeners. Yeah. So am I, are we talking about little noisy kids? Cause I'm an expert. No. We could talk about this for a long time, but <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's what you mean when you say noisy wins the day. No. So noisy is part of my brand. I make happy noise. I'm a, a not only a fitness expert, but I'm a speaker and, and keynotes and so forth. But I, I host sporting events. I'm a professional race announcer and I make happy noise professionally, but it also is really necessary necessary i think for anyone's success is to be able to have your voice speak up for yourself know what you want know how to ask for it know how to negotiate i mean uh the shrinking violet very rarely gets what they want yeah that's i mean that's the perfect metaphor for that too but it's it also comes with i would assume confidence but confidence has to come from somewhere else right so you mentioned a number of things about knowing how to ask for what you want uh, knowing how to stand up for yourself. So it, with this concept of of being noisy, making noise and standing up for yourself, where do you where do you have to start with people that have never really embraced this concept? So I, I think it starts with their fear of speaking up. Right. And so I used to have that fear of speaking up, fear of asking, asking for opportunities. And uh, long story short, I was a competitive kickboxer. I had tons of magazines and media outlets doing features on me and they would they would write all these articles and they would be six page, full color, beautiful spreads in magazines, but they would butcher the information. Those, those journalists or whatever, they were screwing it up constantly. And really what I wanted to do is write the article so I can write, but I was afraid to ask. And so this went on for a couple of years where I would show up at a bookstore, I'd get this magazine. I'd think, oh, they spelled my name wrong. It's four letters, F-I-T-Z. How do you get that wrong? And I was constantly filled with frustration. And then I left a particularly brutal training session one day where it was me versus six different sparring partners because I was the one training for a fight. And I get I get done. I'm black and blue. I'm exhausted. I get my Jeep. I go to the bookstore. I get one of these dastardly magazines that have screwed up all the information. And I sit there frustrated. And then and then it dawned on me. I thought, hey, dummy, you're afraid to ask for the opportunity to write an article, yet you stand in a ring in front of thousands of people of across from someone who wants to knock your head clear off of your shoulders. What are you afraid of? And, and that was this real light bulb moment for me. And so from then on, oh, oh, so I make the call. I call Bob at, I think it was Black Belt Magazine or something. I said, hey, Bob, this is Fitz. Oh, hey, Fitz, how you doing? I said, I'm great. I got a question for you. He said, yeah. I said, hey, listen, I'd like to write an article for you. He goes, oh, well, that would be great. And then he goes, and how much money do you want for it? And I thought, <laughs> oh my gosh, he said, yes, and he's going to give me money. And so from then on, I learned that if something does not cause bleeding, bruising, or broken bones, I have nothing to fear. And so that carried me through for a very, very long time. And then I got diagnosed with cancer and I went through 15 months of chemo, radiation, surgeries, all sorts of actually terrifying stuff where I was actually fearing for my life. And so I walked past cancer and now, I mean, I'm, I'm close to a nightmare, Brandon, because nothing scares me. I am so hardcore. I am so outspoken, always polite and courteous. And I like to be delightful as well. But yeah, I'm not afraid of anybody unless you're wielding a gun. I'm not afraid of you. And I'm certainly not afraid to have a conversation in business. And so I know your listeners have gone through scary things in their life, whether it was illness or injury or losing someone. And they can they can compare the simple task at hand, whether it's negotiation or or reaching out, making the phone call to those real hardships, those really scary situations. And then they'll come back and go, okay, I'm going to make that phone call. And usually it will go in their favor because nobody's a mind reader and people want to know, people need to know what you want, 
what you need. And, and most people are out for a win-win situation. So if you speak your mind and you get a little noisy, you usually get what you want. Yeah, it's such a, that's a really cool story. I mean, the, the ups and downs and everything in between, I think the problem is that those of us who have not gone through those things, like, first of all, I'm not standing in a ring with someone who wants to kick my head off. Right. Uh, I want to be on the same street with someone who wants to kick my head off where yeah. I can get away from them. But we make those situations just like that in our head. We think if I have to pick up the phone, this person is going to kick my head off. First of all, you could just hang up. So like that's already invalid off the table. Right. But what is it just repetition? Is it practice? Is it a choice that you make first? How do you get yourself to say this is life or death? OK, no, it's not. I just need to make a little noise. Yeah, I think rationalizing it in your head. I mean, really, we we could think of a tornado or war. Those are things that are actually scary. You don't have to have, to have had cancer or, or been a fighter to realize that the little things in life actually aren't so scary. And then you have to you have to constantly think that way. You have to change your way of thinking. And I do tell myself, trust me, sometimes I want to reach out to someone and I get that little hesitation and I think, OK, dummy, no bleeding, no bruising, no broken bones. you got to do this. And then it becomes. And then you got to make it a habit, right? You got to do it often enough. And then you'll realize you did not have broken bones because of that conversation or, or engagement. And perhaps it works out for you. And, and maybe sometimes it won't work out for the first few times you ask, but eventually it will. And I think salespeople are some of the toughest people in the world. I don't consider myself a salesperson at all. I loathe the sales. I love it. People invite me to come speak. So I don't really have to go sell stuff. But they're tough and they take no all the time. And, and those salespeople are usually some of the most jolly, jolly capable people on earth. So um, asking and making those, those, having those tough conversations really uh, can be something you learn to do and something you're, you learn to become far more comfortable at. Yeah, it always kind of blows my mind. Um, the, the salespeople who just, they, consistently get no and, and face the rejection, which is most people's core fear. Yeah. Uh, fear, fear of failure, fear of rejection are the two most common fears people have. And everything you're saying is the opposite. It's really not the opposite. It's just to ignore those things because they're not real. But it's right. it's from the repetition of doing it. Yeah. I mean, imagine if I called the company and said, hey, I see you have a conference and I'd like to come speak for you. And they said, no. Okay. <laughs> cares you know i go on to the next one someone's someone's knocking at my door all the time so all right i'm not everybody's cup of tea not everybody maybe i am their cup of tea but they've already booked someone you know it just it doesn't all have to be so personal or so scary and again no bleeding no bruising no broken bones speak your mind yeah that's a that's a good that's a good little mantra mm -hmm. um for those of us who haven't had the bleeding the bruising the broken bones from stepping in a ring or battling a life-threatening disease, what's the quickest way to get them? Because I think, I think some of that I'm I'm hearing it come through that you've had those two massive things among everything else in your life, and you can compare to that as an anchor. What right. is the quickest way to get yourself some figurative? I'm not I'm not advising we get hurt here, people. Right. Re bleeding, bruising, broken bones on our way to getting past it. Well, I think, you know, just practice doing the thing you're really afraid of, even if it's at making that phone call or having conversations about your salary or whatever. Um, but also, I would take a good hard look at your future and the fear of failure. Man, that's got to be the most stomach turning thing one can think of regret. I was actually just listening to a podcast and I don't remember his last name, but his name is Key. He was the little Asian Chinese boy in the Indiana Jones movies. And he had given up on acting because he wasn't being hired. And at 50, he, which is, I don't know, 30 years after he really had a successful acting career, he decided, gosh, I have to give it a go again, or I won't be able to live with myself. It's that regret he was really afraid of. And I don't know, the next year he won an Oscar for everything, everywhere, all at once or something like that. So he took that scary step, reaching out to try and find an agent. He got booked right away. And now he's an Academy Award winner. So the fear of not having success in your uh, your genre or your your passion, your profession, whatever it is, that's got to be the scariest thing. Giving up on yourself, woo, brutal. Take that with you to your deathbed. Nothing's nothing's more terrifying than that. 
Yeah, we've all heard the stories that there's been books written about, you know, asking people on their deathbed, what are their regrets? I I personally never read them because I could just imagine <laughs> like the emotion that would bring up. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to explore that. But another thing that's that's interesting for you is I'm curious which which way you find yourself chasing. There's the avoidance of failure and there's the pursuit of pleasure or success. You just said that one. That story was really the avoidance of future failure. Yeah. What, what is it for you that's most common? Um, I want more. I want everybody. I mean, I learned very early in my career when I was uh, my first time hosting a TV show. I hosted this fitness TV show called Cardio Jam. And I was also still teaching in gyms at the time. But because of my work on television, strangers started approaching me saying, hey, I love your show. I work out with you all the time. I've lost 17 pounds. And I thought, oh, that's impactful. I mean, the fact that this this modem of communication gives me access to strangers makes me feel worthy, right? It gives me this real sense of satisfaction. And so I crave that. I, I'm, not, I'm not okay with only helping 3 million people. I want everybody. Honestly, I would like to go to Afghanistan and shake the little mountains and get the Afghanis to come out and exercise and eat healthy with me. I want absolutely everybody. So for me, I'm a complete hunter. I want to reach as many people as I can. I want to impact them. I want to help them live better and longer. And if I don't reach absolutely everybody on earth by the time I die, I might I might be kind of sad. So I, yeah, I'm i a hunter. Uh, where does where does that come from? What's what's at the root of that that pursuit of reaching everybody? I, I just love people. And I am, I believe so much in taking care of your mental and physical health, how it could impact your life, your not only your, your, your health, health, but your professional success and your personal relationships and everything is better. And I've witnessed it so much. I mean, I sound like an evangelist right now. And I, I'm not necessarily that but I know that I have a compelling message why, and I can make fitness understandable, attainable, and fun, and I can get people, you know, it's fine. Your house burns down. That's sad. I want you to go for a walk around the block while you cry about it. You know I mean? And I get people to do those things. I get people to achieve more because of these simple messages. And I'm just obsessed. I just, I honestly, I love everybody. And um, fitness is bipartisan. You know, it's not a I want everybody to eat right. I want everybody to exercise. I want everybody to get quality sleep. And I know if they do, the whole darn world's going to be a much nicer place. I mean, it would take Washington and make put them all in some sort of great workout routine and things things will lighten up, I assure you. I, I'm on board. I was uh I've taken a couple of flights recently and um I too want people to get in better shape because we all didn't fit in the rows Oy. and planes are not designed for the trajectory we're on as a country. <laughs> well, that and we cannot afford this healthcare no. crisis, which is not healthcare, it's sick care. We have so many people have been full blown reckless with their health and now we're all paying for them. We, you know, taxes, where are they going? They're probably not going to better your life. They're going to foreign countries and these taxes are going to fund people that have chosen to smoke, to eat recklessly, to avoid exercise, all the things we learned in kindergarten do eat fruits and vegetables, do move your body, don't smoke cigarettes. All these people said, F that, I'm going to do it anyways, and you're going to pay for it. So yeah, I mean, there's there's a million reasons. Trust me, I could go on not only for the bright spots of fitness, but the real costs of people not being fit. And and yeah, I mean, there's, there's a real burden. If you're not taking care of yourself, you're not only putting your life at risk, but you're going to be a burden to somebody else's. And who wants that? Yeah, it's it's one of my passions. It's one of the reasons I started this show to be what it is. I mean, I love business. There's there's nothing I love more than solving problems, especially for other people, helping them grow their business. But there was this common theme that I always saw, and it's the people that didn't take care of themselves, didn't have the discipline to treat yeah. themselves and their body right. They always had the worst businesses. And I, we can clean them up to a certain degree, but it's a pattern. And it's a yeah. lack of discipline that will destroy you and your business over and over and over. I, I love this message. I'm sure you probably see that very same thing with people too. Am I right? I do. I do. And if you look at one of the um, common threads amongst Fortune 500 CEOs and executives, it's that they work out almost every day, right? They have this, they start their day, they get their blood pumping, they clear their mind. They have some of their best ideas while they're swimming in the pool or walking their dog or lifting weights. And so it is proven that the most successful people have a 
incredible commitment to their health and physical activities. And for those people who are saying, I don't have time. Okay, well, let's take two of the most um, powerful, busy men on planet Earth, George W. Bush, Barack Obama, whatever party you stand with, those guys exercise five to seven days a week during their presidency. Obama lifted weights, played basketball. Uh, Bush rode his bike. He went running, you know, there, but there was the theme. They took care of their bodies and they managed the free world. So if you think you're too busy, think again. And if you also use the excuse that says, hey, I have kids, I can't exercise baloney. You brought them into the world and it is your obligation to per promote and preserve your own health because they're going to need you, not just when, until they're 18. They're going to need you for guidance and love and concern when they're 30 and 40 and 50. And if you drop dead because you ate garbage, you rejected exercise, you did drugs, you smoked cigarettes, you drink too much alcohol, well, shame on you. So um, we can make arguments all freaking day. People, people hit me with a lot of excuses, Brandon, as you can imagine, I don't settle for any of them. Yeah, I just I just heard you combat uh, almost all of them there. Yeah. <laughs> but I hear that one too a lot because I, I have kids. Work out with your kids. Yeah. Teach them, instill that with yes. with them from a very young age. You have yeah. to. So this is actually something, and I'm curious to get your feedback on this because this is where I see a lot of people as business owners say one thing and do another, whether it's with your kids or with your employees. So with our kids, I'm very committed, committed to eating a, a clean diet. I have some health issues myself that are, uh, they're autoimmune issues. And I, I want to, as best as possible, manage them without medication. I'm very committed to what I eat. I want, I have my kids eating the same diet and they didn't always, that transition was very hard from goldfish to asparagus, yeah. but now they won't go back. They don't want the goldfish. They want the asparagus. How, how does that play out when, when you teach people and talk to people and help them with just that commitment and discipline to make a better future for themselves and their kids? Absolutely. So first of all, kudos to you. Well done, dad. Um, but when you know better, you do better. When you know better, you have to do better, especially when it comes to your family. And so what I ask parents to do or encourage them is to be honest and talk to little Johnny or Susie and say, hey, listen, mommy or daddy just learned something. And I really love you. And I love us. I love our family. And so we're going to do better. We're going to make some changes around here. I'm not going to make them instantly hardcore cold turkey, but we're going to start weaning ourselves away from some of these bad habits. I'm sorry. I've been giving you sugary sodas. I'm so sorry. I've been starting your day with a donut. If I would have thought more about it, I probably would have done differently, but we're going to move towards more nutritious food and just have that honest, frank conversation, but also know that you're the parent. And if they resist, sure, they're going to resist. They like their donuts. They like their sugars you still are in charge of the grocery shopping and you know it doesn't mean they can never have a donut but on the regular before they go to school they're going to have some produce and some protein and uh, maybe some lean dairy products they're going to have the healthier version of uh, whatever breakfast is going to look like and you're responsible because also i just talked about parents dying young oh nothing's worse than outliving your kids you want to see those kids grow up and do well, what if, let's just pretend your child dropped out of heart attack at 33 because they had a terrible eating habits, which you taught them. What if your child is diagnosed with stage four colon cancer at 40 because they've been eating endless amounts of red meat for their whole life, which is a stage 2B carcinogen. And so there are things that you should learn about health that matter to you and to them. And really, the last thing anyone wants to do is outlive their children. And if, if you're someone who's already done that, I'm so sorry for you. It's uh, that's the nightmare for me. It's being noisy, far less scary. Yeah, absolutely. Talk about regrets, right? I mean, yeah, let's be noisy. Let's all be more noisy. I'm yeah. inspired. I love this Fitz. <laughs> Where should the audience go to learn more about you and, and learning how to be more noisy? Yeah, well, I would love it if everybody came to visit me at fitzness.com. That's F-I-T-Z-N-E-S-S.com. -S there's not only stuff about me, but really more importantly, there's a whole bunch of content there that's free for them. The exact formula for weight loss, where I just teach them how to eat the right amount of the right food for the size they want to be. No diets, no gimmicks, no pills, no powders, no garbage, no expense. Just read it and change, change your weight, get to your goal weight. There's free workout videos, free articles, free content. And then also I'm at fitness on all social channels, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. I'm very active on LinkedIn. And of course, if you follow, I promise quality content in return. But really what I would prefer 
our new professional besties. So you can reach out and say, hey, I heard you on Harmonious at lunch and we can connect. That would make me very happy. Thank you so much for allowing me to be on your show, Brandon. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. This was fantastic. So I love to end the episodes, though, before I let you go with with a question. And I know you're like, but you ask me questions all the time, idiot. No, it's a question from you to the audience. We talked about a lot of different stuff. The, the theme was getting noisy, but it was we also talked a lot about avoiding future regrets and failures and, and fears. What is what do you want the listener to ask themselves after this episode? What is the powerful question that will get them a powerful answer in terms of shaping their future? What would the worst thing be if they actually put aside their fears and went after their goals wholeheartedly? Mm. That's a good question. I like that one. Well, you know what to do with it as a listener. Before you answer that question, make sure you subscribe. Thank you for being here. We love having you. Go check out more of Bits. You have all the information down below in the show notes. And we'll see you on tomorrow's episode of Harmonious at Lunch.